Hello everyone, this is CG Novo 992 and today we are back with a brand new video and there's a smile on my face that honestly has not left since late last night. By the time I actually posted that win over Real Madrid, we had reached over 50 thousand subscribers and honestly I, I can't even control my emotions my mind's absolutely pickled eggs it's scrambled it's whatever kind of metaphor you want to use the nasha is a way ladies and gentlemen i mean this is a milestone that we've looked at now and i honestly never thought we would get there after a couple of years in the channel it was always the hope it was always a pipe dream but now we have actually went ahead and reached it and before we go into today's video, which is of course a league prediction video, which is always fun and interesting and a bit of back and forth in the comments, I just really wanted to take a brief second at the start of today's video. Foot faffing about, foot gone anywhere, just a massive thank you from me to thee, because this isn't a one-way street, this isn't me reaching 50k because I'm the best at this, or best at that, no, I'm not good at <laughs> anything, let's be honest about that. It's the community we've built here, it's Interaction, it's our channel, and that fact will never ever be lost with me, and I do genuinely appreciate every single person who tunes in to the channel, whether they're, they're liking, whether they're commenting, or whether they're just watching, for giving your precious time to the channel and helping it to become what it is, from me to thee. Thank you so much. But as this is our achievement and is our channel, there's only one way we can all celebrate together and that is by grabbing your refreshment. It's time for a little sponsor break. So let's have a toast to 50,000k. Let's toast. We're going for 56k. So three, two, one. Sponsor break. Cheers, everyone. But I know a lot of people's tuned in for the league prediction video, so let's get on with it then, shall we? As we are here to predict the Kish. Nah, you know what? You know what? I can't even be bothered saying it, ladies and gentlemen. If they can't be bothered to put a capital letter in their name, I'm not going to sit here and waste everyone's time. It is the league title, and that's what we're here to predict. So make sure we get involved down there in the comment section below. No one at all last year. I scrolled through every comment. I think there was over 400. I scrolled through every one of them, and despite the numerous 10 in a row and Ivory Coast flags that was there. No one perfectly predicted it. I got 5 out of the 12, which was no bad bit. Let's see if any of us can actually get it 100% spot on. So get involved as we go through a bit. Let's start with the bottom then, shall we? And let's start off with 12th place. And for the first time in a very long time, we didn't ever need to contemplate Hamilton, which is absolutely fantastic for all of us. But there is one team that comes to my mind right away when I think of the team that will be relegated this season. And that, unfortunately, is going to be Ross County. And I think if you look at the transfer business and what they've done with their squad, it's quite evident that they might be worried about that as well. So many of their big players, so many of the players that's been players for them over the last few years has helped identify them as a football team. Ross Draper, Ian Vigors, Gardine, they've all left. And so has their manager, Big Yogi, who I actually think played a massive part in keeping them in the league, as did Stephen Kelly, my lone player of the year last season. He was outstanding for County. They've lost all those pieces, and I know they've added some interesting ones like Big Samuel up top and Ross Callahan. This obviously came over from Hamilton, but I'm just not seeing enough in this Ross County side, so I do think they are going to struggle, and they will go straight down. But, if you're a Ross County fan tuning into today's video, then not worry about it. I picked St. Johnson, they finished bottom last year, and they went ahead one, two cups, so I enjoy the season. <laughs> now, the living spot in the league was again an interesting one for me, because I actually think the bottom six this year is so, so tight, because I think everyone's at a very, very similar level, like not everyone's crap or anything like that, but it is going to be an absolute battle, so anyone could genuinely fall and it could be a matter of a couple points to separate, separate sorry, 7th all the way doing to 11th, that's genuinely how it could be, but there is a team that comes in my mind and again I'm going to base a lot of this on the defence ladies and gentlemen, the defending, how good you are at the back, because if you look at Dundee, who I am picking 11th by the way, there's no bitterness, there's no anger towards them, it's just looking at their team and I know Charlie Adams had a fantastic year and he's still got it on that wand of a foot, and I know they've got Jason Cummins who will put the ball in at the back of net, but them defensively troops is where I think they are going to be caught and be undone a lot of the season, and when it is going to be so tight all the way down to the bottom six, I think their lack of being able to keep a clean sheet here or there will cost them, so I I'm picking Dundee for that living spot, and a spam folder check needed. Number 10 on the, remember, remember people used to do that, that was funny wasn't it, anyway 10 Troops, I'm actually going to go for a team that's going to have a sharp decline from last year where I put them to finish third 
in the league all the way down to 10th. And I do apologise to Gogs of United, but that is who I'm going to go with. I just think Mullerwell is going to be here. Now, I do like some of the transfer business, and one of them being, obviously, Liam Kelly, who I do think will pick them up points and win them games because he is a very, very good goalkeeper. But you look at who's left that football club. You're talking about their club captain, Declan Gallagher. You're talking about the man who scores some of the goals, Devante Cole. And you're talking about their best midfielder by far, Alan Campbell. That's the spine of the team that's gone for Mullerwell. And I just look at them now and the people they've brought in, it's not overly impressing me. And I do think they're in for another hard year, which should make for some entertaining. Goxy Vlogs. Ninth then is next up, and I'm actually going to go with a team that's going to surprise a lot of people because the general consensus, I know, well done me on smashing that word first time, but the general consensus, twice now, but is that this team is actually going to do very, very well. But in my opinion, I'm just going to go against the grain because I look at this Dundee United side and I think whether it's going to be during this transfer window period or in January, I do think Shanklin will eventually go. So that is where I'm leaning for Dundee United in that ninth spot because you look at them on paper, they should be doing higher in the league because they've not really lost anyone but they've added a couple of interesting pieces like a Charlie Mulgrew, for instance, that makes sense given how they play. But under, under a new manager and the way they kind of played last season, starting off very strong but completely falling away and really hemorrhaging goals by the end of the season. It could be anything for Dundee United, but I do think the ninth spot is where they'll end up. Can I just say, by the way, that's what's so annoying about the transfer window still being open by the time that the league starts, because these positions could drastically change, but I can't do that now, because we have to predict it before the first game of the season, but the window is still open, so I it's annoying, Trips. If there is any updates, I'll fire it down in the comments if certain people does leave. But now, at number eight was a really tough one for me to pick, because I was kind of going back and forth and back and forth, because everything screams that this team is going to struggle because they've done the exact opposite for Dundee United, where Dundee United's kept the players and added talent. Livingston has lost a lot, and I mean a lot, of their players. But if there is one team that I will never, ever underestimate or overlook again for losing players, it's going to be Livingston because that is their bread and butter every single year. They lose who's been their best players, they bring in players that makes us all go, I don't know if that's going to work, but then by the end of the season, they're their big players and they're leaving the next year. So I, I'm going to go with Livingston here. I think the home record again will keep them in the division. I think the manager certainly is a maverick. He's a breath of fresh air. If there's ever anyone who can get the best out of certain players coming in, like an Andrew Shinney, who can change a game and also look after our boy, Ben Williamson, who I think might have a season and a half for them. It's that laddie. So I, I'm no going to abandon the Livingston hype train. I don't think the dream is going to be over. I back Livingston to keep on at it. And I think a cheeky eight spot is where they'll finish up. Now, just missing out in the old top six finish is going to be a team that genuinely could finish anywhere. They could push into the top six and have a phenomenal year. Or they could genuinely end up 11th or 12th. And that is going to be the championship winners in Hearts and that may be interesting to some people because you look on paper once again you see boys who will always always get you goals they've got very talented attacking wingers they will score a lot of goals this year that is something I'm very very confident in doing and I think they will be one of the most entertaining teams beside this team right here but one of the reasons Hearts will be one of the most exciting teams to watch in my opinion is because they'll also be conceding it on the other end because their defence struggled at times in the championship and they've actually lost some players. I'm not too impressed with certain people that they've brought in defensively for the football club. So I, I do think it's going to be all goal once again for Hearts. Lot of goals, lot of goals conceded. Couple of very good games and I'm sure some of them will be against Hibs. But for me, I just didn't rate their manager too highly. I don't think he's identified the right positions. I, I just don't think he's a very good manager and that will hold them to about the seventh spot. But in my opinion, that's a no bad season for Hart, surely, coming back up to the championship. Moving into the old top six, and this is where people get really disappointed about where I put their teams. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to annoy everyone right now, especially the St. Johnson fans, which, to be fair, I picked his last, last year. He's went ahead and won two cups. I've went ahead and halved it this year. You're now finishing six, so who knows what you could go ahead and do. But I do think St. Johnson will be bang on 
for that sixth spot, despite the fact that there's a wee bit of running theme in Scottish football when one of the other clubs besides Rangers or Celtic goes ahead and wins a cup competition. The next year is usually a bit of a slog and they usually struggle, but I think St. Johnson's too well run. I've seen enough now a Callum Davidson who I got completely wrong last year. I can see the way they play, the free at the back, fearlessness. They will always struggle and hurt teams and they've kept the majority of the pieces so far together. Yes, they lost Scott Tanser, which I do think is a bit of a loss in my opinion, but they've kept the majority of the centre-backs now. Is that going to be the case by the time the window shuts? That remains to be seen, but right now all I can do is judge the teams and what they have this second, and I think St. Johnson, despite the odds, maybe suggesting they'll struggle overall, I'm backing them to have another very good season and a top six finish, and I hope that's where Middleton ends up. Like that band that ripped off a lot of the Queen songs in the early 2000s, it is now time for five, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm actually going to continue with the Saints on this one because I'm now going to go St Mirren. And if you've been following the channel now for a few years when we used to do the SPFL show and everything like that, St John, St Mirren sorry, would always be that team I would talk up because they went from part of the bus, part in football to actually getting the ball doing and trying to make things happen, playing quickly out to the wings, getting the ball into the mix. And that's when they didn't have any money to spend at all. You could see the progression of what they were trying to do. Now years and years into that project, it's flipped. Now they have got some money and they've been spending it on very, very interesting signings. I mean, Brophy joined last year. I know a lot of people was disappointed in him, but it was kind of midway in the season. I think Brophy will have a bounce-back season this year under St Mirren. But you look at their other business. I mean, Greg Kilty, I think that is a tremendous signing for them. And again, they previously mentioned Scott Tanser, who was formerly of St Johnson. They picked up a couple of very interesting pieces that works in this league. And I just think St Mirren will take that next step up and be a problem for a lot of teams. And also best of luck to Danny Finney as well. Obviously formerly of the Rangers youth team. He's now went ahead and joined them permanently. He's a 20 year old right back. And I think he might have a very interesting season if he can get anywhere near the part. So best of luck to them. But aye, fifth is where I think St Mirren will finish. Top four. And I'll be honest with you, I've really struggled from sort of five all the way down to 11 because I was going back and forth from my mind. I was checking the transfers. I was looking at the teams. I was checking how they're getting on, who's performing well, etc., etc. And I was going back and forth with a lot of these picks because I think it's going to be a very, very tight season. This is probably the most complete SPFL league season now for a very, very long time. But the top four was so easy to put in a place. And I'll tell you who's finishing fourth, in my opinion. It's going to be Hibs. And that's despite the fact that they went ahead and finished third last year in the top flight of Scottish football. But again, you look at the players, maybe they lost a couple of game changers like Stevie Marlin. I mean, they lost David Gray, who's been a very good player for them over the years. And they lost one of the most important players, especially whenever I used to watch him play, because he would just go out there and perform and perform and perform. And that is none other than their goalkeeper, Marciano. We mentioned it earlier for Liam Kelly. Goalies will win you points in this league, how many points did he win them over the years, especially against us, he's left and who they've brought in so far, again that's all I can really talk about right now, nothing's really jumping out to me and saying, oh he could be a sensational player for them going in to next season, so I'm not overly impressed with the transfer business, but it's Hibs under Jack Ross, they're settled, they know how they play, they know how to play to their strengths so I think another very good campaign under Jack Ross is under the way for Hibs unfortunately. And you know, son, I think it's going to be very close between third and fourth, and it might just be hearts that cost them the old third spot. Third on the old list, and I'll tell you, son, I had to think about it. <laughs> Genuinely did, and that's such a good feeling to be able to sit here and say, but nay faffing about here, obviously first place, I think it's going to be reclaimed by Aberdeen. Now again, Transfer business done very well. They picked up the Mullerwell captain, uh, Declan Gallagher, which couldn't fit a team any better, in my opinion. Just a lockdown defender, good in the air. He'll be a pain in the arse to go ahead and play. They've obviously picked up Jet from Livingston, who will always be a handful and make things happen in and around the box. And I'm very intrigued by their signing of Christian Ramirez from the MLS. He could be a good signing for them, which is quite annoying to say. He can find the back in it. So I, they spent a wee bit of money on him as well. So very interested to see how he gets on for Aberdeen. But it's quite clear what Aberdeen's best bit of business has been this season. And it comes in terms of the old midfield with a certain centre midfielder that whether you like him or you know, you've got to respect what he brings to the game. And that is, of course, the fact that Lewis Ferguson has remained 
at that football club. It's so surprising and I didn't understand how they've managed to do it. But Ferguson is still there whilst I'm currently recording today's video. Now, if he leaves, that could change my old rotation at the top four. But right now, as it stands, I think he will have a very, very good season. They've obviously brought in the likes of Brown and they've got McCrory still there to do the hard work, the defensive work. But now you've got Ferguson who can sort of be free to the defensive shackles to get further forward and getting back then what he's best at and that is ripping shots from Rangers he's already shown during pre-season so far so I think he's going to have a very very good season for Aberdeen and that will be the difference maker for them to get back to that third spot oh here we go troops here we go two in a freaking row because it is time now to pick the second place team in the league and it's of course going to be Celtic Football Club and the fact that I can say this now and not need to deal with the barrage of hatred and arrogance that I got last year for perfectly predicting the top two by daring to say Celtic would finish behind Rangers oh they're so ahead of Rangers it's unbelievable no no they weren't maybe if you spent less time talking about Rangers you might have noticed the trend in Celtic and that has been coasting on a weekend league and then when people were closing in and closing in on them they just stayed like that and then that's what's happened with Celtic Football Club. Obviously, they lost IR to Brentford. I say lost, they actually made a lot of money on them. I don't know why. Maybe they're going to go back and play them in the old midfield. But they've lost him now. And I think that is where you need to go when you look at Celtic Football Club. Because not only am I saying this is a Rangers YouTuber who wants Celtic not to win the league or anything like that. I think any level-headed Celtic fan going into this season is thinking the exact same thing as me. Celtic second, and I'll tell you why. Defence wins titles, ladies and gentlemen. And Celtic... They just didn't have one from goalie all the way to their back line. Yes, they've just signed a Swedish centre-back, Kenny Coppi and what Rangers done a couple of years ago with Hollander. But we'll leave it at that. I've not seen him play yet, so I don't know how good he could actually be. But whether he goes in there or not, that is not fixing Celtic's problem. And that is at the back. And I mean, when you're sitting about and you're cutting about with a plastic bag with gloves on and net that can he make a save and who positions himself like this. See if Barkas was a YouTuber. This is how he would do his videos. Honestly, like this. They've still got talented players going forward and they will score, they will go on runs and everything like that, I think, this year. But their defence is genuinely bang average at best. And if I'm honest, I think Hibbs and Aberdeen's defence is actually better as an overall unit from goalkeeper all the way to the back line than Celtic's gone into this season as we stand recording today's video. Which means it is time for number one, the champions. And not only like us now that we've reached 50,000 subscribers, we're gone for 56. Well, so is Rangers Football Club. And I truly believe in my heart that, that we will go ahead and win it. I'm going to put them at number one because the exact opposite of what we talked about with Celtic there in terms of terrible defence, terrible goalkeeping, etc, etc. No strength and depth either when you look at their team in the embarrassing people that they need to employ at the football club because they're not going ahead and signing anyone else. They're a shambles right now. It's the exact opposite of Rangers. There's so many depth, there's so many options per every single game and again, the defence will win you league titles and will win you trophies and Rangers has by far the best defence in the league. Connor Golden's going to be signing an extension very, very shortly. The back line's even strengthened now with the return of Katic being in the old depth and the old rotation. So very, very positive with that. And the fact we have Nathan Patterson and Bassey, our number twos, at the right back and the left back spot better than everyone else in the league. That's, a, that's the second best left back and the second best right back in the league. And the number two sitting at our football club. It's frightening what we're building right now. And I think if you look at the transfer business, people say, oh, you've no spent this, you've no spent this. It doesn't matter how much you spend. It's what you actually spend it on. Because if you look at McGregor, Stephen Davis, Lundstrom, Joe frickin' Aribo, Leon Balligan, Brian Jack, Scotty, Scotty Wright, Glenn Kamara, they've all been signed for free, apart from Glenn Kamara, who was 50k. But that's daylight robbery in itself and the business we've done is absolutely sensational. Zongo going out with obviously Greg Stewart and the fact we've replaced them with Lundstrom and Fashion Sakala is absolutely incredible and I'm so damn happy and so damn settled with the Rangers team right now and I cannot wait going in to Saturday to see who's selected because it genuinely could be anyone and that's a bright place to actually be at. That's it, that's all league predictions for another year. I will see you in 366 days to come back to this video to check the comments, which takes a very long time, but I'll check them and give a shout out to anyone who gets it absolutely spot on. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have been CJ Over 92. That 
has been Rocky Boy Johnson. Take care of yourselves, everyone. We'll see you in the next video. All the best and bye-bye.